family. I hope you guys are happy and healthy and doing well. Good to see you guys. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about small space gardening. So if you just started watching me, first of all, hi, welcome to my channel, Ameka's Earth Gems. My name is Aisha. Um, this channel was started about crystals, but it quickly became about gardening as uh, my passion for growing my own food grew. And I just wanted to learn in front of you guys and share what I'm learning and just encourage you guys to grow your own food and become more sustainable and more healthy. So, um, if you just started watching me, you may think that I have been gardening in a yard for quite a while, but my gardening journey journey actually started on a little patio in San Diego. Uh, my husband was in the Navy and he we were stationed out there and so that is where I started to learn to grow my food and even though I have a yard now I very much still use everything that I learned there so I wanted to create a video for some of you guys who may be watching me and you may live in an apartment um, or you may live in a house like we did but we only had a patio we didn't have a yard and you may want to grow some food and you can do that so I want you guys to help me recreate this small space okay guys so here is the space this is probably three by maybe three and a half or four feet and i think only two things are gonna stay here so if this is all the space that i had i'm gonna create this space like i can eat from it so what i am gonna keep is this tote of sweet potatoes this has sweet potatoes um this is going to grow all the way up into the frost and you can eat the greens while you're waiting for the sweet potatoes. So this will be a great option for you. You can cook those greens. You can eat them fresh in salads. Um, as you can see, I have a small trellis here where the greens can climb up here. And that vertical gardening option is going to allow me to use the rest of the space that's around those sweet potatoes. And then I'm going to be eating the ones that get like a little too sprawly. Also notice down here, I have a little bit of uh, purple basil. This is the purple opal basil. This is going to help um, keep the bugs from eating my sweet potatoes up once it gets a little bit bigger. And also I can eat from that. That's going to be another thing that will grow until the frost. So there I have sweet potatoes, which is... Um, going to be great that's something that once you harvest them they can store for a little while i have my greens that i can use for salad and for cooking and then i also have an herb and that's all in one tote right here up under there y'all know how i do i got kitchen scraps and compost and stuff like that so that's a great place to uh, throw some food scraps as well if you're living in a small space the only other thing that's going to stay here is the carrots. This is going to stay here for me. But if I had a small space, I'm not sure if this would stay here. <laughs> because, well, you know what? Carrots are kind of quick. They're kind of quick. So it depends on how big you want your carrots. You What you want to think about is how much time you want to give um, this space to this particular crop because there could be a tomato there or there could be an eggplant there depending on what you like to eat. So for me, we're gonna leave this carrot here. This is ginger. This should be popping back out pretty soon. It doesn't need to stay here. It's gonna move to another part of the garden. And then this cilantro is going to seed, but it is leaning on this pot right here which is also going to move. There is turmeric in that pot and those don't need to stay there. So what I'm thinking is we'll put a grow bag here with a tomato. I have a tomato that needs to move and I've got some compost that needs to go in. I'm gonna see if I can create some kind of trellis system for it and I'm gonna stick it right there in that pot space. Okay, and so this pot, imagine it's empty. What I would plant here, if this is all the space that I had, was onions. I would plant 
probably the green onions from the store because once you plant them, they come back and back and back and back and you can just eat the green onions. Bulbing onions do take a lot of space and they take a lot of time. So if I was limited on space, that's not what I would plant there. And just to show you guys what some of mine look like, um, I actually, I don't even remember when I planted these, but we bought them at the store. We cooked with them once. They've been here for months. We eat off of them all the time and they just grow back. Sometimes they hang out of this planter and so I have to harvest them. I love to dry them and blend it up. It makes a really nice kind of like onion powder seasoning. It's really good. Another option is Egyptian walking onions. These can live in a small space and they do multiply. As you can see, this one is walking right here. Um, so some type of onion I would put in my small space. Okay, and then what I'm thinking is the last thing I'm gonna put in this space is a grow bag here with two peppers. I'm gonna put the biggest grow bag I have and I'm gonna put two peppers um, right here. And once we do all that, I'll see what I can squeeze in. But the idea is to get the most amount of food in the smallest space. So the sweet potatoes, you will have to wait until like October for them, but once you have them, they last for a while. And if you give them this much space, you should get a good amount. You'll be able to eat the greens while they're climbing and growing all summer long. Um, there'll be onions here for flavoring your food. You'll have your basil here, or you could replace this with a different type of herb, whatever is your favorite herb. And I would say mix in as many as you can as well. I'm gonna plant all the things I have in mind right now, and then I'm gonna see where I can fit more in. And then I've got my tomato that'll be back here. Um, probably a nasturtium or something in the same container. So I'm gonna go ahead and build this up and show you guys what it looks like. And I would love for you guys to comment below and let me know your ideas for small space gardening as well. Peace. Peace family, we're back to the small space gardening now. So I am going to add a tomato to our small space uh, in a grow bag. This is gonna be my first time growing a tomato in a grow bag, I think successfully anyway that I can remember I don't have very many food scraps to put up under my tomato because I packed them to co-op to teach the kids how to build a compost <laughs> but I have a bunch of comfrey so let me show you that boom we had a big old rain last night and the comfrey was leaning all over the garden bed over here and I always like to uh, make sure that my peach has uh, just space, just um, what do I want to say, airflow, airflow. I want to make sure my peach has airflow. So even though the comfrey is under there, the echinacea too, I kind of try to shape everyone where they give each other space. The only thing that's probably not doing that right now is the yarrow because I need to harvest some of this yarrow. Oh, excuse me if you heard that. <laughs> My bad. The yarrow is looking beautiful, but it's spreading. Um, but I love this yarrow. I need to harvest and dry some, and I need to pick some out so that I can put them in different areas. So, anyways, let me chop this comfrey up and put it up under my tomato and I'll come back. Peace. Okay family so I set this part up but I am just going to take the comfrey, chop it up and put it up under my tomato. This is going to be great for um, composting in place, adding nutrition, nitrogen into the soil for the tomato to grow really well. Different pot. I'm not going to do a lot. I'm just going to do kind of 
have a layer over the composting in place to become free. And then I'm gonna top that with some really great soil. Actually more like a soil mixture. <laughs> but I'll show you guys that next. So this is what it's looking like so far. You ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Tell me when to go. You can. <laughs> okay, you can all. now. This is a mixture of cocoa core, perlite, um, probably garden soil, and some of the old soil out of another pot, which is really not old because I'm always composting in place. So that's what I'm gonna top this grow bag off with before we plant our tomato. Okay, I think there's way. poop in it. Yeah, there's rabbit poop. I, yeah. did put, I also put rabbit poop. So okay. I mean by help. Help, like I can and do some stuff while recording. Okay, so what we're gonna do, Mia's helping me. Let's pause. So this is a Sweet Million tomato. This actually fell off, or well, it had fallen off. It hadn't fallen all the way off, but it was hanging off of Mommy's tomato at her house. And I just got it a little bit of roots. And I thought I was going to root it and bring it back over there. But I don't have a plan for that. So I'm going to go ahead and stick it in this grow bag. And I'll take her back something else. Um, so I'm going to just probably break off this branch. And this one. And me and Mia are going to plant it kind of sideways and deep like that. So we're going to plant it like you want to hold it down there? Right. You hold it and I'll pour the soil. I wouldn't put my hands in that because the rabbit poop. The rabbit poop is further down. Yeah, but I still wouldn't be putting my hands in it. Maybe we should put this. I guess I can put my hand in it. There's a little bit more right here too. Put that in there. There we go. What? You're doing great, Mommy. You are doing great. So now we're going to put our tongue. I'm just going to put it all in there. They're all tiny. Maybe we should make a hole. Where should we put it? I can use this for pop to pop it out. Okay. Where are you going to put it? Where are you going to put it? 
I don't know. A we wing can put somewhere. them separate. It's in here somewhere. Because it's this side, right there? Mm-hmm. All right, I think we can put... <laughs> Tomato. Put it in there right there? Mm-hmm. I'll crumble, crumble some of that up. Help the pots will shape it. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll show the people how we do it. Good work, Mama. Now can we get back? As you can see, me and my little one planted our tomato nice and deep. I'm going to cut those flowers off because I kind of want it to focus on rooting and not making a fruit right at this time. And then we planted the thyme smack dab in the middle. And I'm hoping that that just kind of spreads around the base of this tomato and kind of hides it from the hornworm. So I'm gonna drag it over to that spot and water it in and then finagle some type of trellis for it. All right, so all that stuff that I did for the tomato, I did for the pepper too. Putting this one in the taller. This one is normally for potatoes, the throw bag. But I'm gonna put my pepper in here because I'm putting it in a spot where I'm not quite sure if it's getting enough sun or not. I hope it is. It's like on the cusp of still getting a bunch of sun. And I'll go more into that with you guys probably in another video, just looking at microclimates and really taking a look at the placement of your plants because it makes a big difference. How much sun they get or shade depending on what type of plant you are planting so I got this baby planted up I'm gonna drag it over there and we'll get these babies watered in okay family this may not be pretty but I think we did great in this small space so let's take a look what I did add was a flower this time I chose roses. I love roses. They smell good. They're beautiful. Bees love them. And you can make rose water with them if you choose. Um, and I also added a medicinal. It's going to have to be yarrow for me. Yarrow is great for fevers. It's great for headaches. It's great for coughs, flus. And, by the way, if you cut it and dry it, you can use it to stop bleeding. So it's going to be yarrow for me. I always want to have a medicinal, even if I only have a small space. So if we take a look, um, my main concerns, or I guess my main focus was a leafy green that will continuously grow. So for me right now, that's going to be my sweet potato greens. That could also be longevity spinach, which is also perennial. I love that uh, because... I had a hard time growing spinach from seed in San Diego, so I love my longevity spinach. Both of those will die out in the cold, so maybe you want to think about replacing those with like collard greens or something like that later on. We've got a pepper, so hopefully you would have researched like great peppers that grow in your area or the most prolific pepper, your favorite pepper. This one is a, I think it's a spicy pepper, but if I only had a small space, that would be a sweet pepper because that's what my family likes. I've got a tomato. This is a cherry type tomato, so it's going to give me a bunch of small tomatoes for like salads and stuff like that. Um, and if I get enough, I can do sun-dried tomatoes and things of that nature. You can maybe bump that up to like a paste-sized tomato if you can fit that and trellis it. I did not finagle a trellis. I just found uh, an old trellis from something else. Um, so a flower, a leafy green, a pepper, a tomato, a medicinal. The flower is going to bring your pollinators. I hope I gave y'all something to think about. And then vertical gardening. As you can see, my pepper plant has a stake. That's going to help it stand up. My tomatoes has a stake. 
and my greens back here have this i am going to move this tomato back here but just for the sake of the video i'm leaving this for now it needed that to lean on so i'm going to leave that thank you feel free to replace anything in this garden um just have an idea of what you like to eat what you like to grow what will grow for a long time what you can grow a lot of and what will you make the most use of and you can grow a bunch of stuff in a small space um this space is probably going to change so subscribe i never really ask for that but if you subscribe to my channel you'll see how my garden grows and changes over time but i really wanted to kind of get this video together for those of you who watch me and maybe don't have a yard because i started and i didn't have a yard like i just got this yard it's my first yard okay so, but I learned, I started learning to grow on a little patio. And um, as you can see, when you watch my garden tours, I still fit things in every little nook and cranny. So, um, I think it helps me to have those humble beginnings. And I still feel like I'm in humble beginnings. There's just um, abundance at every level. So, I hope if you have a small space, this was great for you to watch. Comment below and let me know how you manage your small space. Things you want to think about is how much light you get on that patio or balcony. Um, what will grow well uh, with the lighting and stuff that you have there. Uh, you can also add grow lights. You can also grow indoors. So, just expand your mind, guys. I definitely think that there is abundance at every level. And I would love to help you get there if I can. Thank you so much for watching. Y'all be blessed. Peace.